We are here. A little bit of review to start while he gets the pictures going. Um, we're on the. We're going to review the price and decision chart a little bit because we want to look at store cash, um, buy puts and sell cash, uh, buy calls. Um, we've all already calculated half of the minimum price um, using a put option basis open, which is store cash by put. And then we'll continue on with a second, with a finishing that one. And then we'll do this other option tool, what I call minimum price using a call option, which is sell cash and buy a call. Um, and then we're going to look at a, a worksheet that, and I'll scare you right off, we're going to fill in a, a worksheet that, that, that looks like this, um, but we'll get to that in, in a little bit. Um, so as we go on down with that, um, what we want to look at look at here again is the same model um, as we've talked about. If we go go right here, if we sure futures are going up, we want to sell cash and buy futures. Okay, We're, that's what we want to do. The base is not going to strengthen up pay storage, so we don't want to be paying storage. We do want to be in the up market. The futures are going up faster than uh, than uh, than cash here. So, be in the futures market now. Basis contract, as we discussed, did the same thing. When the market's going down, we we like our futures now because we don't like them lower. We like our basis now because we don't want a weaker. So we sell cash. Where we're looking at options here is what do we do when we're sure about the basis not strengthening enough to pay storage, i.e. what I call basis weakening, um, but the price might go up and the price might go down. Well, we look at that and we see buy futures. Well, how can we buy futures if we want to and not if we don't? We buy a call. And the same thing down at the bottom. Um, where we sell cash instead of just selling cash, we buy a call. Okay, so it's at the top of the bottom because we know we're on the left hand side, but we don't know. Now we come over here, and this is the one we've started working on. We have store cash. If we know the market's going up and we know the base is going to strengthen, as you can see by those arrows. Cash is going up faster than futures, more than enough to pay for, for storage. So we just hold on to our cash. If we go to the bottom quadrant, it also says store cash. Okay? But we're not storing cash because of um, prices going up or down. In fact, they're going down. We're storing cash because that way we keep the basis um, open. By opening means we haven't priced it. And we sell the futures because we like the futures now better than later. So again, in both of those up and downs, the word store cash. Now we need a, a pricing tool that works storing cash, but when the market goes up or the market goes down and we don't know. That's buy a put. Right there above the green arrow. Store cash, sell future, futures. Store cash, buy a put. What's a put? It's the right to sell futures. Why do we put it in the top quadrant? Uh, sell cash because we don't know if it's going up or going down. If it goes down, if the market goes up, we sell our cash for more. We pay our premium. We have a, a known loss, and we and we move on. So we're going to go with this one uh, next, where we've been, and motor on. And these are just the prices which we've uh, given you before. Um, if you look at those, we're gonna we have a cash price of 426, uh, forward contract price of uh, 437, and then we have those different um, option prices. Um, so with those, we're going to now go through the rest of this worksheet. Um, which is here. So let's look at this over here. 
cash price 429 okay and, and these are were on your notes I sent out last time um, if we did a hedge we take our futures minus our basis minus storage and brokerage we expect 433 notice we always say expect because the basis could change um, we're not looking at a forward contract here because the forward contract more works with a call um, so it would be a hedge or a cash price or this option how do we get this minimum price again using the basis open by storing cash and buying a put storing cash I I have not priced my basis and I've only priced my futures if I decide to use the use the put so we do it just like a hedge but in place of futures um, we have a strike price we picked 460 I picked the nearest to the money but on a put we generally don't go in the money which would be the 470 would be the first in the money uh, put because it has intrinsic value which we'll look at examples if it was 470 um, you could sell 470 and get back to 462 so we so 460 it's close to the same protection as 462 um, expected basis um, and a little later on tonight um, we're going to look at two different put prices to help us try and determine which put we should use um, or the idea behind it because there's different reasons uh, you might want to use one versus another the expected basis minus 20 remember we could be plus or minus a nickel storage cost of our eight cents we've been using I ran a, rounded the 21 and three quarter cent to 22 I take off the brokerage 409 now this is an expected um, minimum price as it says clear over there and this also assumes uh, no time value okay so it's the expected minimum price it could be lower or higher depending on the basis zero if there is time value any time value remaining um, when we offset because pretty we're going to pretty much offset our options from now on versus exercise offset um, and there's still some time value it would add to this minimum price so let's go through a scenario we're going to look at prices up prices in between stay the same and and prices down okay so futures go to seven dollars now in this example I'm gonna leave the basis at 20 cents um, because I'm trying to just teach us how to how to do it um, later tonight I'll change the basis a little bit and show you how it changes um, the answer so that means what would the cash price be futures are seven 20 under is 680 again the reason I send out these print offs I think it's important that people write it down not just watch see what I'm doing that's how I found it sticks in your head a lot better of course different people do learn different ways and I'm I can't see you so I guess you can do it any way you please 340 okay we're gonna get this for sure once we sell it and then we have to look at what do we get um, from the options if we get anything what did the option cost us what were our storage cost and what were our brokerage okay first thing we need to do is buy and sell the option the option cost us 22 cents so I went to sell it I have a right to what at 460 buy or sell I have a right to sell I can sell at 460 and buy it back at seven dollars or I can give up my 20 cents my 22 cents which are you going to do do you want it to cost you 22 cents or do you want to want it to cost two dollars and 40 cents plus 22 cents well obviously um, 
you'd want it to only cost you 22 cents. Nobody's going to give you anything for it if this is near expiration. So that's zero. So you bought for minus 22, you sold it for zero, and it cost you 22 cents. What you're going to do here is let it expire. Okay? Um, because as I discussed last time, this brokerage is probably a little bit low for options. Um, if you decide to offset or exercise, they may, may, do, may do more. I still have my storage cost of minus eight, brokerage cost of a penny, so my net returns here are minus 31. I'm 31 cents, I sell it for 680, I have a net of 31 cents, so six dollars and forty-nine cents. Okay, now let's compare it. If I had hedged it, I would have got four thirty-three, which is better than selling it at harvest time. If I had just stored it, I would have gotten six eighty minus eight eight cents, so that would have been six seventy-two. 680 minus 8, 672. Or to use in the option, I got 649. Well, if it went up and I could use hindsight, I'd rather have 672 than 649. Okay. If it went down, I'd rather have 433 than 409. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll get to it going down a little bit. So again, options are always going to be second best. Let's go prices down next. Okay, it cost us 22 cents. Okay, let's say it's about run out, so there's no time value. Okay, um, what that means, the value that we can sell this for is what we call intrinsic value. Okay, so only intrinsic value left, um, no time value. So we have a right to sell at 460. Okay, we can buy it back at 360, that means the intrinsic value is a dollar, and you'll get at least a dollar. So, it with no time value, you get a dollar, um, which means your net was plus 78 cents. Okay. Still had my storage cost, still had my brokerage, okay. So I netted 69 cents. I had 69 cents to the 340 and I have 409. Lo and behold, the price I calculated is my minimum price equals what I got is my minimum price. There are three things that can change that. One, prices go up, as we see right here. Another one that could change it if the basis didn't turn out to be 20 cents. If this was 15, it'd be 414. If this was 25, this would be what? 404, okay? The other thing that could change it, and we'll show more examples later, is what if I, it wasn't ex about ready to expire, the uh, intrinsic value was a dollar, and the time value was five cents. So otherwise, I could go and sell that for a dollar and five instead of one dollar. That would raise this down here five cents. And we'll do that, I'll show it to you. Um, we're gonna go through that complicated one this uh, later this evening, or we'll start it at least. Um, and see where we get. And by the way, follow me through, and if I think my class is uh, dedicated and, and go at it hard enough, I'll send everybody the spreadsheet, they'll calculate it for you. Now, you'd still have to put in the cash price and the futures and the strike price and storage, but only storage once and all of a sudden you have the answer. So. But I'm not going to send that out to anybody that doesn't work it out by hand first. And I have my ways. I've been teaching a long time. What's in between? Okay. 
cost me 22. No time value left. I have a right to sell at 460. Buy it back at 460. Intrinsic value is zero. Here, intrinsic value is zero. Here, it's a dollar. So minus 22 cents, minus 8 cents, minus the penny brokerage or whatever the brokerage is, we have minus 31 cents, and it's at 409. Okay. Now what you would find if you did this, I could go on four dollars, it would have been 409, given my assumptions that the basis is what we think and no time value. I could go to 260, it would be 409. Okay. So basically what happens when prices are low, this is 409. Okay. Once prices start getting very much above 460, okay, your returns start going up like this. Okay? And this pivot point is futures at 460. Okay? So this is what it kind of looks like. It gives you downside protection for any time the futures are lower than your 460 and then it starts giving you upside. But it's upside minus what? It's upside um, minus your uh, brokerage fees. Okay? So that's uh, how that one works. Um, we come over here, go down another one. We've already discussed it. I'll just point out one thing. Now we're going to do this sell cash and buy call over here. Um, and go on to the next next screen here. Now we need some different numbers off of this. These are the same numbers um, that we've had. Okay. Um, we were buying puts. Now we're going to buy calls. I need to go back here a little bit. If we go up to the top one here, right where that green arrow is, okay, you'll notice there is two. Um, there's sell cash buy a call, and there's forward contract buy a call. Well, remember, a forward contract is you have sold your cash, you just haven't delivered it yet. Okay, so there's you can sell cash by a call forward contract by a call, and you just go with the one, if, if sell cash is higher than the forward contract minus storage, and we'll look at it, you sell, you sell cash. If the forward contract minus storage is higher than today's cash price, then you'd forward contract. But then in both cases, if you're worried about, you didn't know if it's going down, it might go up, we'd buy a call. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pick I'm going to pick a call. I tend to take the first one out of the money as the first one I'd consider. Again, just like the insurance cost me less as you took a lower and lower strike price and also gave me less protection as we'll look at. With calls, the insurance gets cheaper and cheaper as you go up. Okay? Because you get further and further out of the money. Um, so we're going to use the first one out of the money. Um, it might be that you even want a cheaper one, but your insurance won't be quite as productive if the market takes off on the upside. If the market goes down, you know, then then it might be a pretty good, pretty good deal. So we're going to look at that um, over here. And, and the one we're going to choose is 470 and I'm in 19 and a half half cents. Then we're going to uh, motor on along here and, and fill in our 
our minimum price um, hedge to arrive. I'm going to leave this here for just a second on your left hand screen until we get the prices off it. Um, I have the futures here. Remember the net price is 433, but really the more important one here I want to compare it to, okay, is forward contract um, is 437 minus our 8 cents equals 429. Okay, now in this case, we've already looked at with this cheapest storage, we're on the right hand side. The basis is going to strengthen up to pay storage, but we still need to go through this example. And then, of course, we're interested in the cash price um, as well at 426. Okay. Um, if you sell it now or, or forward contract, okay, you um, have everything set. Your future is set, your basis is set. Um, so which one, which one to use? And we'll look at it. Example that. So we're going to use the July call. We're going to use the 470 strike price. What's really nice about a spreadsheet, once you put the numbers in, you can look at 470, 480, 490 in you know, just seconds um, and, and find out how it changes um, what you're thinking. But the thing about spreadsheets is it's you know, it can be a black box. If you know how it's calculated, then it's not a black box. But not knowing how it's calculated can be, be dangerous. Now this is a little different. Remember on the put, on the put here, we determine kind of the expected price we're going to get by the strike price adjusted by the basis, just like we did on futures. On this one, we know the forward contract is 437. Okay, or you could come over here and have cash at 426. Okay. Um, this is the minimum you can get minus your eight cent storage. If you sell your cash, there's no storage, right? So this is sell cash. The premium um, was 19 and a half, and we're going to round that up to 20. Oops, the decimal point's in the wrong place. Okay. Brokerage cost, we'll keep it simple. Okay. So, 437. Let's say everything goes against us. We don't want this call. 437. We still had to pay our storage of 429. Minus 21 more cents is four dollars and eight cents. That's the worst we can do. Now, what's happened here? I go ahead and deliver it for the 437. I have to pay my storage and my broker. There's no intrinsic or call uh, value left, which means I just let the call expire. This would be, of course, if prices went down in this case, not up. In cash, I take the 21 cents off of that, and I'm at 405. Now, in this case, I'm a little bit indifferent to which one you would pick. Um, you know, your corn could dry, your corn could uh, get too dry, your corn could freeze in this nasty weather, and then bad things happen. Um, so you may not think for three cents I'm going with cash. But since I already worked out the example for a forward contract, you're a perfect store and the stores, the corn's going to be in perfect condition. So we go to futures, July. Futures went up to $7. Okay. Uh, 460. 360. The actual basis. Um, you know, it can be minus 20 like before, but it's not applicable. It's not important, okay, because our basis was set up here, okay? Our basis was set at 
it's going to you'll see later 51 cents before we before we started the four 462 okay the cash price of forward contract we're going to go with a forward contract so that's four dollars and 37 cents four dollars and 37 cents four dollars and 37 cents now we buy a call and we sell a call we bought the call for minus 20 cents okay we're not going to have time value so no time value but let's see what we can sell this for what's the minimum the market will pay you. Okay, what's the minimum value? Um, it could be zero, but what if, if the prices go up? At least intrinsic value. Okay? This is the right to buy. Okay? 470. I have a right to buy at 470. Futures have gone up to 470. As a speculator, I'd be loving it. As a farmer who did this here, I'd be pretty happy about it. So, what would it be? 470 up to $7. Who can do that? Do that math. Okay, well, I'm at, I was in my office, so I pulled out my spreadsheet and I set it all up and I went $7 minus 470. And lo and behold, it was the same thing I could do in my head. It was $2.00. That's not right. Two dollars and thirty cents. Okay. Minus twenty is two dollars and ten cents. Okay. That's why I don't tell jokes very often. I blow the punchline. <laughs> so two dollars and ten cents is what the net after we buy it for twenty cents and sell it for two thirty. We have two ten. Minus eight cents. Minus our brokerage, and we have a net of that transaction of for, because we kept it. What we did after we made an agreement to get four four thirty seven. So we add two hundred one to four thirty seven, and we have six thirty eight. Okay. Now I could pull over the other one and say, well, how does this compare to the 649? Um, that's not quite a fair e example because we used a 460 put and a 470 call. And if if price had been, you know, 465, it might have been all right, but they are 462. So prices went up, I gained. Okay. Now, is that as good? is if I just sold cash and bought futures. Remember, if I'd sold cash at uh, 426 or for, con for 426 and I had bought futures at 462, I would add $2.38 to add to this. Um, which would have been in the high six dollar range instead of six thirty eight. But six thirty eight is a lot better than either four twenty nine after storage or for a contract or four twenty six. So again, options never first best use in hindsight. It's second best, but at times it can come in pretty handy. The other nice thing about this is you have your forward contract. Your forward contracts to deliver this in June. What if prices go right up quickly um, to and in beginning of May they're as high as you think they're going to get. Okay. You don't have to keep this option until June. You can sell that option when you think the market is as high as it's going to get or you're satisfied with that price. Or if your corn starts going bad, if it's a forward contract, sell cash, that wouldn't be an issue. Okay? At that point, you would get the intrinsic value, okay? and you'd get the time value. Now, 
That sounds like it might be more than the futures, but it really isn't because once you subtract off what you paid for it, okay, the futures price probably didn't go up quite as much. I mean, it, the futures price didn't, but the time value left is not going to be near as high as the time value you paid originally. Um, so it's not quite a one to one to one. It's really not a one to one unless you keep it um, all the way to delivery and then it comes close. Well, let's look at prices going down. Cost me 20 cents, I bought it. I have a right to buy it for 70 and sell it for 460. That's a loss of a dollar 10. Anytime it looks like the intrinsic value is negative, what's the intrinsic value? Intrinsic value is zero. Um, because nobody is going to take a buy at 470 who doesn't have to to turn around and sell it um, for 460. And I'm going to, for this example, I'm also going to say the time value is zero. Again, it might not be. With this big a drop, and if we're, say, the middle of June when this option's about ready to expire, then time value is going to be awfully close to, to zero. If it was that example in April, you may have, even with this big a drop, you may have two, three cent um, time value because the market's thinking, hey, that may go back up. So we sell it for zero, we buy it for minus 20. So the net from buying and selling is minus 20. Still had to pay our storage, still had to pay our brokerage. So our net is minus 29 cents, 29 cents uh, from 437, 408. Okay, 408, 408, exactly the same. If this had been um, 426, it would have been 405. We would not have had the 8 cent. The other numbers would have been the same, so it would have been 21 cents off of 426, which is 405. Okay. Again, in between one again, minus 20, zero time value, I'm um, excuse me, zero intrinsic value, exactly. It's right on. It would um, well 460 is actually still a little bit below. Excuse me, there is. No, there, you have a right to buy. It's still below it. So the intrinsic value is zero. You can't sell it for anything. Even all the way up to 470, you couldn't have. Or I mean, if the, you'd use the 470, if this price had been 470. So minus 20, minus eight minus 1, minus 29, the same as over here, and we have 408. Again, you have 408 until futures are over 470, and then you gradually start uh, going up, and, you know, and then somewhere along here was your 638 at the time the futures were 7 dollars. Okay, and remember all, as usual, you should be trying to take down these scribbles because that's how you remember, but I'll send these, uh, send these out. I'm glad I sent out the, by email because I looked at my web page a little bit and some things have disappeared. We'll take care of that in the morning, I hope. What's, what's this? I hope so. <laughs> okay, so again, this is a time when we do this. Um, where we're on this side of the chart that it's on, and we move on. Now, what I want to look at. Um, now, though, or, or, or think about a little bit, little bit here, is 
We've now gone through all these different alternatives on the pricing decision chart. We've done a basis contract, um, which is the same as sell cash buy futures. Um, we've looked at the sell cash buy a call, for contract buy a call. The one we haven't mentioned there is this, uh, the fifth one on the upper quadrant there. Um, minimum price contract. All that is is an elevator doing the exact same thing as either sell cash or for a contract and buying a call. And you need to work with them on that. And if you show you know what you're doing, um, the merchandisers will work with you on that. Um, it is a contract to go through them. You don't have to deal with a brokerage and, and other things. Um, the other thing I, would, I do want to say about options markets, which I didn't mention, um, in the futures, you have margin calls and that type of thing. But as long as you're buying a call or buying a put, okay, you pay what it costs, and that's your maximum loss. So you don't have to have a security deposit. If the market moves, quote, against you, you're, not, you're going to let it expire, so there's no margin money being sent to Chicago like there would be if you had sold futures and the market went up or you bought futures and the market was going uh, going down. So it, minimum price contract is the elevator. Now, when you, you can't just walk in and say, I want a minimum price contract, okay? That's why we go through these others, okay? You want it based off a particular futures month, you know, we use July, it might be May, it might be, um, we'll get into new crop, crop later. Um, and it, maybe you want to do it with a sell cash or a, or a forward contract. The elevators are probably going to push you towards a sell cash, which oftentimes when you do this one, um, by the time you uh, subtract off storage, oftentimes uh, you might as well sell cash. For example, if this was commercial storage, and instead of eight cents, it was 20 cents. You know, instead of 429 return to your, it would have been 405, and that 426 uh, cash price would have been a lot, a lot better. Um, and again, this minimum contract, the decision's going to have to be made by the time before the uh, the option expires. Um, we go down to the bottom quadrant here. Okay. We've talked about selling cash, forward contract, sell cash, buy a call, forward contract, the whole thing. Again, three, four, and five are the same as three, four, and five up at the, the top because both those are going to be, we don't know if the price is going up or down. So then we come over here. We think futures are going up, store cash, delayed pricing. Um, they're basically the same thing. What you have to do is really the only difference might be storage cost because if you're storing it um, on farm, that you can't do delayed pricing if you're storing it on farm. Delayed pricing is when it's delivered to the elevator and you pay their storage uh, charge. And then we have store cash by a put. This minimum price hedge to arrive is what the Anderson uh, first named it a long time ago. Um, it makes sense to me. It's like the minimum price, but it's like a hedge. So if prices go down, you have a hedge. If prices go up, you don't. Okay, so I think it's a good name. Um, other, each firm kind of has a different name for this one. They don't advertise it as much. They, they lean towards a, a minimum price contract. Um, but if you talk to them and work with them and show them you understand, um, they'll work with you, or the, the odds are really high, or one year you will work with you if this is the proper thing for you. And we go to the last one here, um, hedge, hedge to rise, the elevator doing a hedge to rise for you, some of them just call it to arrive. Um, they, that's another key, and, and a problem with this marketing, you, 
Yeah, the first thing you got to do is find out what they mean by the different names. If there's a new term come along, ask. Someone will tell you what it is. Don't assume any too many things. Some of them are almost exact, but um, and then we have store cash by a put, and again, this minimum price hedge to arrive or whatever minimum price um, type thing they they use. And some of it just it's a minimum price with the basis open. Or the other one's a minimum price with a basis fixed, basis set. So those terms should get you where you want if you know which of those two you want. Okay. So we want to go through and and look at a chart, which is you'll actually be able to read it, whether you believe it or not, that looks like this. Um, we're going to get the prices off of this one. So I'll leave those up there until we put some crisis along the top of this. Um, what I did for you, though, if you're having trouble seeing it, as I sent out last night, here's this sheet here. I did send out a cheat sheet. Now, it's a little hard to read on here, though. I can read it even from where I'm at, but my screen's about two foot by four foot. Um, so here's current price. Here's current price. Here's going to be the future. So if you're having trouble reading my writing, although I encourage you to follow along because I'll show you how the calculations are, you can follow along um, over, over on this one here. But for just a minute here, and I'll bring this one back, we need to see these prices here in order to fill in the blanks as we go over here. <clears throat> now I'm going to read some off. I'm just going to be basically, you're going to see where each one of these is calculated. What I like about this is all of them are right here in front of you. Which one should I use? Which ones are best? Um, and they don't all do the same same thing for you. The bottom half the sheet then is what happens. And we'll go through one where prices go down. We'll go through another one um, where prices go up. And then we'll talk about, and then we'll go back and say, well, what really only matters is the top. Because this is where your decisions are made. Okay. This one might tell you when to get out, but if once you get to the end of June, you're kind of out, or in the middle of June. Okay. So the decisions are really made up here. Um, although you can always fill in the top half, fill in the bottom half a month from now. Am I doing better? Should I get out? Fill in the bottom half two months from now, three months from now. Or a spreadsheet, you can do it in a few minutes, um, anytime. So we look at this, and um, we have a date. Okay? So the price, the date's over there, is till 2 24, the year 14. Okay. Um, the current price is four dollars and twenty six cents. The forward contract um, for in your cheat sheet has the wrong date on it, or does it? Maybe I fixed the cheat sheet I sent out. No, nope, it's wrong. This date here is for June delivery. Not the day it was set. Okay, and I'll fix that on before I send it out to you. Um, and that's 437. Okay. The futures month is going to be July. And the futures contract is 462. The storage cost is eight cents. 
The expected basis is minus 20. Now we're going to go over to options. We're going to use July and we're going to look at two different options to try and show how things are D two different strike prices might work. So we're going to use July. We're going to do 1440. And then we're going to use somewhat different numbers, but one of them is going to be the 460. Okay. Now, of course, I could have done 450 in between that. I could have picked 430 and 450. I picked two of them because I can make the point I want to make on what different things they offer you. And then I have to go over here to the premium. Well, the 460 premium we already know is 22 cents, and I always put a minus in front of it because it's a cost. Okay. But if I come over to the 440, uh oh, that's not a good place to put it. I put it right on top of it. If I can move that up a little bit, it's 13 cents. So real briefly what's happening here, I'm picking a cheaper premium, but we'll find out I have a lower cost. Okay, now, um, it is a little bit amazing. You, you need to think about this. For 20 cents more protection, okay, I'm only paying nine more cents. Okay, so there's, there's these trade-offs. On the other hand, if I don't use it, I wish I only paid 13. So we'll go through that. Uh, brokerage costs are going to be a penny, and we'll take care of those in a minute here. So we come over to this last one here. We're still going to use July. Okay. Here we're not using two different strike prices. We could. We're using the same one, but what I want to compare here is if we use it with a cash price versus if we use it with a forward contract. Okay. So there we've gotten all the uh, numbers off of this one here we need. So we'll move down. Um, this is the chart we're filling out, um, which I sent out one for you to, to do. And then hopefully I sent this one out um, what I would like you to, only thing you need to do with it right now is put June 13th or 15th or something uh, versus the February. My apologies. So we we look at this, and here's the different different numbers. So let's do one at a time. If we sold it today we get 426. Okay, and that's why on this other one, you'll notice the 426 is in, the yellow is anything you got to input, and notice you only have put in the expected basis once and it fills it in the rest of places, brokerage, it fills it in the rest of places, storage cost. Um, the answers are in green, initial answers, other than this one here because you also have to put it, put it in. So, 426 you could do. Well, let's compare that to a forward contract, which we've already kind of done, and that's 429. <clears throat> um, we're going to, and you see it's not even on the spreadsheet, we're going to dump this one here right now because it needs to be dumped. Um, we're not going to get into the farm bill, and I'm going to really start this next week trying to dissect and learn more about it myself, but uh, there's been some of this stuff that's changed, and up to this point, even we could still use the government loan rate for this old crop, but it's a dollar ninety something depending on where you're at. Um, so it's not really. A, it used to be a nice uh, put. Um, you didn't have to buy a put when price went below a dollar ninety two because the government provided you a put. What's a put? If it goes below it, I get a dollar ninety-two. If it goes up, I get a higher price. What's the cost to me? Um, I have to be in the government program, and at times there's certain restrictions. But it was cheaper than any put in the market when we went down there. Hopefully, we don't go below dollar ninety-two this year. 
and then the new program is changed. Um, the next one we want to look at is a basis contract um, relative to July. Okay, and remember what a basis contract is. It's the difference between current price and futures. Okay, so it's uh, 426 minus 462, which turns out to be minus 36, 36 cents. Now, what's this minus 36 cents mean? Um, no matter what the futures do, you're going to agree to take 36 cents less than that. Now, we don't do the sell cash and buy futures on this worksheet because you come up with the same answer when we get down here. Okay? Um, so this one's taken care of both those uh, pricing alternatives, uh, a basis contract and sell cash or buy futures. This down here isn't on my spreadsheet, but I am going to talk about it a little bit. This is, in a way, the weight to price. Okay? If you're going to wait to price, you need some idea of what's the odds of it going up or what's the odds of it going down. You're optimistic. It's average your, what's your pessimistic price is what these three are asking for. Um, we're going to come back to that. Instead of actually filling in those, we're going to look at a probability distribution like some of you have seen on my web page or I'm going to talk to you about what they, what they are. And instead of just being optimistic or a pessimistic, we'll look directly at, I think there's a 20% odds that prices will go up at least to this. I think there's a 20% odd that they'll go down to something else. <clears throat> now we look at our hedge. Um, and we have 462 minus 20 cent expected basis, minus 8 cents, uh, minus 1 cent, and we come out at the 433. Um, we've seen that about six times now. Then we go over to put options or the minimum price hedge to arrive. Of course, this is up here, this is for corn. This one here is the same as store cash uh, buy put. Okay. We're using these strike prices in lieu of a futures price. The expected basis is minus 20 cents. Storage cost is 8 cents. Brokerage cost is a penny. And again, I maybe should be using two cents. So I expect the worst I can do, the minimum expected selling price would be 440 futures because I have a right to sell there. I have a right to hedge at 440. I could have at 462, but I just purchased the right to lock in futures at 440. That futures price has to be adjusted by 20 cents, so I'm expecting you know, a net of 420 in the cash market, no matter what, it, if it goes down. I have to subtract the 8 cents off of that in the brokerage, but I also have to subtract off the 13 cents I'm paying for it, and I get $3.98. Is $3.98 as good as 426? No. Is it as good as 429? No. We have no clue how it's going to end up versus the, the basis. Is it good as the hedge? No. Okay. Remember, the expected minimum price is worried about when prices go down. Okay. So let's say if we buy. So it's an insurance. I won't do worse than 398, other than I have some basis risk. We come over here, 460. Um, close to futures, so adjusted price of about 440. If the basis does what we think, because we have protection at 460. 22 cent insurance, and we come down here at the same 409 that we we're looking at earlier. Okay. Now the question becomes: 
Which is better, 398 or 409? Okay. In one way, I'm for nine more cents. Okay, I'm buying 20 cents more um, premium. Okay, so notice there's 11 cents between these two. Okay. 20 cents more protection, nine cents more cost. 11 cents higher protection if prices fall. Now remember the other example though. If prices go down, okay, you lose your 22 cents. If prices go up, you lose your 22 cents, um, but you have a gain. What if prices, um, but you gained in the K? What if prices went up? and you only lost 13 cents. Well, I'd rather be subtracting 13 cents off that 680 than subtracting 22 cents. So how important to you is the 11 extra cents of protection? It, it, 11 cents by way times 5,000, you know, is real money. We're up there around 500 and something dollars. So I don't, I don't want to downplay it. On the other hand, if prices go up, um, I save nine cents times 5,000 bushels, and it's a little under $500, uh, 450 or whatever. Okay, so it's real money um, in either either case. We're always dealing by bushels here, but sometimes we need to think: Are we doing this on 1,000 bushels, on 5,000 bushels, on on uh, 20,000 bushels? And my apology, I still haven't done a. a a good work on the mini, so I'll come back with that on Monday. Um, so we'll look at this. So we've gone through all the ones over here where we're interested in looking at the right-handed chart. Now let's look at the left-handed side. So we come over here. Um, storage. If you sold it, you don't have to worry about storage. That's NA, not applicable. You still have your brokerage cost. Okay. You still have your 20 cent cost of the premium. It's actually 19 and a half cents. We rounded it up. So we come down here, we have the 405. Or we have the 8 cent storage and the minus one. And we have the 40, 408. Okay. Now we're going to come back to it a, a, a little bit later, but again, this is where most of the decisions have to be made. Which of these I'm, am I going to going to do? Um, with this on-farm storage, I'd probably lead towards some mix of a hedge. Um, and buy puts, even though one of these is lower. If I went to the uh, 450 put, it would be as high as this one. Um, so I just picked a lot lower put than I'm looking at over here. So really, we can only compare the 409 um, with these with these two with these two over here. So we're going to start down the bottom part of that page over here where the little green arrow is and notice it says outcomes so this part down here is the outcomes okay and I'm going to do prices down okay basis I have strong on there but it's really stronger than so you can see everything expected that's how you spell expected when you run out of room. Okay. Let's come over here and have that have that scenario. Prices crash. Okay. Um, you're now the 15th of June. Um, options are going to run out in a couple days. Um, time if you had a Ford contract, it's time to deliver. Um, if you have a hedge, you really don't want to carry a hedge into the month because the basis all of a sudden can start jumping all over the place. 
um, because uh, elevators move on to the following month and the cash, once you get into the month, it doesn't always follow the futures as well as it does up to the beginning of that month. Okay, so cash price crashes to 385. Okay. Um, we have our storage cost of eight cents. Um, so we net 377. Okay, that's when we wished we'd hedged or we'd sold it right away or forward contracted or or done something. Okay. But let's look at this one for a little bit. Okay. In Usually I give you the cash rights and the futures, but to make a point, I want you to figure out the futures. I'm going to tell you the basis is minus 15 cents. What were we expecting? Were we expecting minus 15? No, we were expecting minus 20 when we did this calculation. So is minus 15 stronger or weaker than 20 cents? Well, I kind of gave it away over here. It's uh, stronger. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go down here to the bottom before we even calculate this hedge. I'm going to tell you I think we got 438. How did I get there? I'm at my 433. The basis is five cents better than I thought. Okay, that's a, that's a three just because it doesn't look like it. Okay. Now let's go back up here. Okay. Um, if cash is 385 and the basis is minus 15, what are futures? They're not 360, right? No. And you're not looking at the sheet sheet, you're figuring it out. It's four dollars. Four dollars minus 15 cent basis and we have our 385 385 cash. So we if we just stored it, 377. Um, if we did a basis contract, we take futures today, four dollars. Okay. Minus plus our basis contract, plus a minus 36 cents. And our answer is 364. Okay. Now we uh, we generally generally know um, if a hedge works, a basis contract generally won't be in our favor. Now, if this had if this basis had been 20 cents, you know, then this would have been. Uh, 371 and it would only been the six cents different which is more what we expected as we get over here. Um, we're rebooting the, the camera there but we can talk from the uh, cheat sheet for a minute. If you look over there you see 377 in green that's our go oh, we're back on it 377 and our 364. Okay. Now these directions here go this way, so we still need to look at our cash price on June 15th, and that's 385. Okay, just like when we did on our hedges, we still get our cash price when we do a hedge. Um, then we need to look at okay, so we we sell it for 385, but we're looking for this this net. Okay, over in the other one where it says equals net price received. And that's what a hedge is. We're getting something from the cash and we're getting something from the futures. We add them together. Sometimes we're adding a minus and we get them. So we buy and we sell and buy futures. We sold futures for 462, right? Um, we bought them back for four dollars. We sell and buy. Did we make or lose money if we were a speculator? I put 462 in my pocket. I took four dollars out of my pocket, and lo and behold, um, 
I have plus 62 cents. Still have my storage. Still have my brokerage. Okay, so the storage and brokerage took nine cents off of this. Okay. Um, so we netted 53 cents from that. Five and three is eight. Three, four. Four thirty-eight. Fifty-three cents plus three eighty-five is four thirty-eight. For those of you who didn't notice, 438 equals 438. Um, so again, the only the head only amount the hedge can be off is by the basis being different. That's given other things constant, of course. Um, every once in a while our corn may not be of the same quality. Um, we may have less corn in the sense there's less moisture in it. And that's really an increase in your in your storage cost. So let's go over to options. Okay. We're still going to use July. Okay. And I'm going to go a little bit backwards. Okay. We have a right to sell at 440. We can the futures we we have the right to sell at 440 the futures we could buy it back at 440 if we exercised it but we can offset it for a minimum of intrinsic value so that means the intrinsic value here is 40 cents now we got a few days left um, on it so i'm going to tell you that there's one cent a time value what this is telling you is when you went to the marketplace to find out what you could sell, and that's pretty little writing there, this this four, okay? You could sell it for 41 cents. Now what really happened here is you found you could sell it for 41 cents. You can calculate that the intrinsic value is to 40 cents, although at this point you're going to get the 41, and that means you gained a little bit. We're going to find out this time value shows up in our favor. Okay? Prices went down. That means we're using this put. We are going to offset it. We're not going to let it expire. And we sold it for a penny more than we expected. When we calculate these numbers here, as I said early, we assume a time value of zero when we calculate any one of these four um, numbers. So we look at the so we're going down here the cash price is 385 we still sell it for that okay um, we bought options for 20 cents we sold them for 41 cent okay which means we had 28 cents we gained in the options market excuse me 41 cents minus 13 cents gives us 28 cents. We had to store it. We had the brokerage. So our net return from that is 19 cents. You add 19 cents to 485 and we're at 404. Prices went down a lot. We said our expected minimum price was 398. We did our calculations and it's 404. Okay? Um, what happened? Okay. Well remember, just like a put is like a right to hedge. Okay? So on a hedge, if the basis is stronger than you expect by a nickel, you gain a nickel. Okay. The basis was five cents stronger, so we gained a nickel. So you had a nickel to 398, and you have 398 plus five cents, and we have 403. 403 does not equal 401. Where'd we get the other penny? It's real. We got it. 
I heard you all answer at the same time. We gained a penny in time value. Okay, so we did six cents better because the basis and there was some time value left. Okay. Let's do the next one. Okay. We'll do the other one the other way. I'll tell you, you went out and you sold it for 61 cents. You did the math. I had a right to sell it for 60 down to this. So we knew the intrinsic value was 60 cents. So the time value was again a penny. Okay. So now we're thinking you're on top of it. We're a nickel better than a basis. We're, we're a penny on time value. So we're looking at 415 down here, right? 385. Um, plus and minus, you, you, you paid uh, 22 cents for it. You sold it for 61 cent. Uh, that gives you plus 39. Um, storage cost of 8 cents. Brokerage of a penny. Um, plus 30 cents. 30 cents and 385 is 415. Again, 6 cents better, the basis and the uh, time value. So now we'll come over to the last one here. So at, at this point, um, the hedge is looking the best. The, the higher priced insurance is looking um, second best and then we uh, go downhill from, from there. Now we're going to look at if we had either sold our, in this first sold our cash and then a forward contract. Okay. The option premium was a penny. Okay, well, I have a right to buy at 470 and sell at four dollars. That's negative. That makes intrinsic value zero, which means the time value must have been a penny. The same over here, zero to time value penny. The cash sale, I actually went, already got my 426 a while back. Or my uh, 437 was promised to me as I deliver here. Um, I buy and sell options. Okay, well, I bought it for 20 cents. I sold it for a penny. So that's 19 cents. Both of these are the same options, so that's the same. No storage cost here. Storage cost of 8 cents. A brokerage fee. So over here we have our, our net return of minus 20. 19 in that. And over here, minus 28. Um, 19, 20, 28. You take 20 cents off of this and we're at 406. And take it off of this um, and we're at 409. 28 cents off my forward contract uh, price. Now, 406 is a penny better than 405. 409 is a penny better. Remember, if you've sold your cash, you don't have any basis risk. If you forward contract it, you don't have any basis risk. If it gets better, you don't gain. If it gets worse, you don't lose. So this penny difference here is from the time value. Um, at this lower price, would there be any time value? Um, probably not. But if, it, if we were getting out of this the end of May, there's probably still a half a cent or a penny or, or whatever it, it, might, it might be. Okay, so that's the chart there. Um, if we, where am I over here? Okay, this is a mess, um, but we'll look at it and then I'll show you what you'll be looking at. 
Okay. Outcomes. Price up. What, what's this top part? This top part's exactly what we did. Okay, we did prices up. The prices aren't going to change any from one way to the other. And we're going to say the basis weaker. than expected. Okay, and that's written out. It says uh, basis uh, a bit weak. And all we mean by that is we expected minus 20, so it's going to be greater than minus, minus 20. Um, okay, here you have it. Okay, this is a lot. Um, this stuff at the top half, the sheet there, is a lot clearer to read than, than this here, but it's exactly the same. Although, once again, this should be June. And I'll correct that on the one that I, I send out uh, probably tomorrow afternoon. Um, Although we'll put the try and put the link up quicker. Okay, here's the same other things. Um, we have about 14 minutes, so we can get we can get started here. Now we're June 15th or so, of 14. Okay, and cash prices went up to 6.75. Okay. By the way, if you uh, I forgot to tell you to print off two of these, but this will be good practice for you to do because what I suggest is we're going to put in some numbers here and you try and figure it out and you have a cheat sheet and then we'll go back and review it. July here went to $7.00. Okay, so if futures are seven dollars, cash is sixty-five, basis equals cash minus futures. So the actual basis is what? Minus twenty-five cents. Now prices went up, but the basis relative to futures got weaker. Okay, so that that's an important point. So when we go down this hedge down here, okay, we're going to take the 433 expected, like you can read that, but you can read it on the other one, minus what? It's five cents weaker. This is going to be 428. Okay, and we'll see that when we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the whole calculation to, to do that. Um, so even though prices went up, that doesn't mean always that the basis goes in the same direction, especially if it's going up rapidly. Um, because in a little bit you're being taken advantage of. Your, your cash price is going way up, so maybe you won't pay attention to the basis. On the other hand, the last few years when the price went up really fast, the basis not, got stronger. It actually got positive. Uh, um, for a while this past this past summer. So this is an example. Um, they don't have to be tied together. I've seen instances where when prices go up they widen a bit and when things are really tight um, then they're begging for corn. Over here we minus our eight cents. So we're at 667. That's a lot nicer price than our 426 or our 433, what turned out to be 428. Futures today is $7 minus our 36 cents. And we have 664. Notice that's a lot closer. The reason is, is the basis got weaker. So having a little bit weaker basis that we subtracted off, it got closer. So these aren't a whole lot different. And this one, turns out you didn't have to uh, store the corn. Uh, but we've adjusted for that 
up here. So we'll probably get through that few more here. So on June 15th, the price is 675. Remember all these take take that. These over here the same thing. 426 437. Okay. Buy and sell futures. Okay. You sold for 462. You bought for seven dollars. And what does that equal? Okay. You make money on that? Nope. The answer to that is minus two thirty-eight. Okay. Now we knew that was going to happen if prices went up. This isn't a big deal. It isn't anything odd. Storage cost of eight cents. Brokerage cost of a penny. Um, off of that, and that comes out to be a negative 247. 247 from 675, and we have our 428. Okay, again, the only thing that's off here is our basis. Okay. So I think we can still get through these puts and we'll come we'll review them and you can, you know, spend every extra minute of your day reviewing. July. Okay. I tell you you can sell them for a penny to make a point. Obviously we have no intrinsic value. Nobody um, is going to want to sell at 440 to buy them back at this. Yes. So if there's any value, it has to be time value. Okay. So in this case, we bought the option for uh, 13 cents. We sold it for a penny. So we lost 12 cents. Um, 22 cents plus one. We lost 21 cents. We have storage cost in both of these. Brokerage cost. Um, I did have a question over here. Did I forget to bring the forward contract price to the bottom of the page? The answer is no, but what I did remember to do um, is put it in bold print up, bold print right up here. So if we look at this chart here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are the ones that you can pair when you try to decide. So if they're numbered up here, you still have to, that's part of the ones when you're evaluating and using hindsight how you did. Thank you, Ned. Um, so we have the net returns of minus 21 cent, of minus 30 cents, and we have 654 when we take 21 cents off of 675. We take 30 cents off of this, and we have 645. Well, I'll be darned. The lower cost insurance returned 9 cents more then the higher priced insurance. Okay, Pretty simple. Um, we paid more for the premium in order to get more downside protection. Okay, If you're willing to settle for less downside protection, the 398 instead of the 409, okay, you're going to pay more for it. When prices go up, you didn't have an accident. The bottom line is um, you're going to get, um, you're going to do better. Okay? 
but you didn't have the accident. The accident being prices, uh, prices crashing. I'm going to go ahead and race through these a little bit, and then we'll we'll start at this page when we when we come back on Monday. Um, the option premium. Well, let's look at it. Well, the intrinsic value is 230. I have a right at 470 to seven dollars. I kept it easy. I kept time value at a penny. So 231 and 231. And this is what you did. Sell my cash, forward contract, buy a call to take advantage of when prices are going up. Okay? You think I move around a lot in a chair. It's a lot more front and front of the class. Stay in shape. But anyhow, so I still put what I got. Okay, I'm going to buy and sell 231 um, minus 20, and I have 211. 231 minus 20, I have 211. No storage cost here, 8 cent storage cost here, a brokerage in both cases. So this is 210, and this is 202. Um, nine cents off 211, and our net price is 636 and 639. Still, the basically the same uh, three cent difference, whether we go up or down, because we use the same call. We were just trying to decide: are we better off using the cash price or the futures price? What I want to talk about here as we, we go on to our next one, as we go into our, our, our next uh, thing, first of all, we'll review this. Um, we'll come back with this. Um, what's our odds? And, and I'm going to go ahead and put this into the one we, we send out. And then I'm going to say, given those odds, um, and maybe and we'll, and and maybe some different cost of production, how much risk you can take. Um, oops. We'll go through um, just the top half the sheet. What should we do? And we'll use that, and we we'll use the bottom half the sheet to try and come to um, some conclusions. Um, the other thing that I want to do start next time is is we haven't really looked at new crop, and I want to really look at new crop. I'd like to kind of get through some new crop ones of these um, next Monday, um, if we can, and go through the difference of them. Again, up and, and down, how basis contracts are calculated a little bit different, um, and look at that, and then try and say, OK, um, now we're just not looking at storage things. We're looking at this new crop market. Um, I'm going to relate back a little bit and, and maybe even use a chart or two from the uh, the webinar that I did uh, yesterday and and I sent out to you, um, where I use a lot of these terms and I and I talk about it and try and look at um, where are we. Um, this is this is the odds of where we're going to be in. Um, in July. So what I'll do is I'll bring in uh, December corn futures in, in, in our last meeting and then see where we go. And then maybe clean up some other um, odds and ends as we, as we, as we go. Um, I'll get that, uh, this one uh, sent out as soon as I can and I will uh, be sending um, information's out, uh, worksheets that look just a little bit different than these. Um, I still have to build my spreadsheet for a new crop, which basically just takes out storage. So until Monday, Jim. it'll be next month, right? So until next month. Um, um, one of the things that uh, Ned and I were yes, talking about uh, is the, the potential for us to possibly put together about? a marketing club. 
is the potential for us to and or to look at a uh, possibility of taking a trip to Chicago to the Board of Trade, uh, something that we've done historically in the past and Chicago just wanted to, to kind of put that on the table. And we'll probably survey in the group to see if there's folks that would be interested in pursuing that idea. We'll probably survey in the group to see if there's folks that would be interested in pursuing that idea. Okay, why don't, um, let's do, you can do that right away. Why don't uh, we give you five minutes of a little bit of more time when we're not past our time to, now that you brought it up, um, and, then, and, and then you can do your thing. And then the last session, uh, you know, maybe a little I'll bit. Probably have a survey put together for next time, and we'll maybe take a poll. I'll probably have a survey put together for next time, and we'll maybe take a poll. That'd be great, great. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Ned, and thank you, Steve. And.